Hey there people, it's Sun Fruit Danis. I wanted to make this video that I've been planning for a while and that is to give a warning as to why you should not get your wisdom teeth removed, at least in most circumstances with most people that have wisdom teeth still in their mouth. And as we know, wisdom teeth are these ones that are the ones to the furthest over in these directions, as you can see here, the red, 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 and red. And we're all born with wisdom teeth. And yeah, there's a lot of places, especially normal dental surgeries, just like this Westchester oral surgery that says, should wisdom teeth be removed before college, for example? It says, yes, teens shouldn't have their wisdom teeth removed before college. So a lot of people believe their dentists that they need to get them removed. And um, as you see here, it says, what are the indications for wisdom teeth removal? And it goes on to say them here, making room in the mouth, crowding in the mouth, not allowing second molders to erupt properly, stopping pain, wisdom teeth growing in an angle or incorrectly positioned, making second molars susceptible to bone loss because it's hard to clean between the second and third molars, cysts, these are benign but also contribute to bone loss in the second molars, and why is potential bone loss an issue and therefore an indication to remove wisdom teeth? There are several different situations in wisdom teeth extraction is the best option. When that's the case, it's time to act. So yeah, most people are gonna hear this type of thing from their dentists. So a lot of people could think, oh, it's a really good idea to get them removed, even if there isn't any signs from the body that you need to get them removed. Because if you have an impacted wisdom tooth, they can impact where they go downwards or sideways into the other teeth. And in that type of situation, you'd want to get them removed. But most people that are getting them removed do not have impacted wisdom teeth whatsoever. So yeah, a lot of people are just being sold lies by their dentist just to make them money. And what I'm gonna do now is, first off, I am gonna talk about this article and read some of it out, which talks about the dental industry and how many extractions they're doing a year, how much money they're making from it, and why in about 67% of cases, there is no necessary need to actually remove wisdom teeth. And they go into a lot of detailed information. Now I'll read some of it out, but I will not read all of it out. And I'll put a link down below for this in case you're interested in this. And then after this, make sure that you do watch the full video because then I'm gonna explain to you why you really need your wisdom teeth and what organs that they are connected to in certain parts of the body and how getting them removed will have a negative effect on those certain things that I will talk about. So, if you go here, 10 million third molars, which are known as wisdom teeth, are extracted from approximately 5 million people in the United States each year, an annual cost of over $3 billion. As you can see, it is a very profitable thing for these dentists to remove people's wisdom teeth. So it makes them a lot of money. And as we know, most normal dentists cannot be trusted. They're just in it for making a lot of money. And that's why a lot of people end up becoming a dentist or a doctor, because they know that they can make a very good annual income. And yeah, for a lot of people, they just care about earning a lot of money. And in addition, more than 11 million patients of standard discomfort or disability, pain, swelling, bruising, and malaise result postoperatively, and more than 11,000 people suffer permanent paresthesia. And if you don't know what that is, it's numbing of the lips, tongue, and cheek as a consequence of nerve injury during that surgery, because it is a very traumatic surgery to do, because yeah, there are big tooth that's in there and pulling them out is obviously very traumatic, causes a lot of bleeding and cause a lot of issues. And at least two thirds of these extractions associated costs and injuries are unnecessary, constituting a silent epidemic of iatrogenic injury that afflicts tens of thousands of people with lifelong discomfort and disability. Then it says here in the United States, prophylactic removal of third molars, brackets wisdom teeth, is advocated by almost all oral and max iliofacial surgeons and many general dentists. According to the American Association of Oral 
and maxilliofacial surgeons. If there is insufficient anatomical space to accommodate a normal eruption, removal of such teeth at an early age is valid and scientifically sound treatment rationale based on medical necessity. As a result, 10 million teeth classified as impactions, which means teeth that fail to erupt into normal position but remain fully or partially embedded and covered by jawbone or gum tissue are removed every year from mostly healthy young people. And then, this article goes on to say, there is no evidence of widespread third molar infection and pathology or of medical necessity to justify so much surgery. In fact, 50% of upper third molars classified as impactions are normally developing teeth, most of which will erupt with minimal discomfort if not extracted prematurely. Only 12% of truly impacted teeth are associated with pathological conditions such as cysts and damage to adjunction teeth. Most discomfort in of erupting wisdom teeth is equivalent to teething and disappears on full eruptions. As you can see here, many times they're saying it is completely unnecessary, even though so many dentists are saying that you need them removed. And like I said, in most cases, when they fully erupt, the issue can go away with any impacted teeth that a child is having or somewhere else. Most infection of the gum tissue around the erupting or partially erupted teeth can be prevented by good oral hygiene, including toothbrushing. Infections only occurs in fewer than 10% of third molars, most of which can be cured with antibiotics. I do not agree with that. At least pharmaceutical antibiotics, natural antibiotics would be fine. Oral rinsing or removal of excess tissue around the tooth without requiring removal of the tooth itself. Most of the pain and illness attributed to third molars is caused by the surgery, not the teeth. And what I have to say is, they also don't say a lot of things. Also, eating a diet that is not causing loads of inflammation in the body and this isn't having a negative effect on the immune system will help you not have issues with your wisdom teeth. And your wisdom teeth are really connected to your kidney health. So if your kidneys are not functioning as often as possible and they have just got a lot of toxic substances in there and you're just not looking after your kidneys through things that you are consuming and putting within the body, then it's gonna have a negative effect on your wisdom teeth. And I have in the past suffered with what I thought was an impacted wisdom tooth, where I was in bed for days. I've had this happen a couple of times in the past, and the tissue around the wisdom teeth becomes really, really swollen and inflamed and painful, and it feels that they're starting to push through, and it's really, really bad. And in most cases, people will go to a hospital. But by doing lots of things such as fasting and doing certain rinses with coconut oil and various other things, I managed to get it under control and not have to go to a dentist and get the wisdom teeth removed whatsoever. And also your lifestyle factors play a huge role into whether you get issues with your wisdom teeth. If you're having a lot of stress and you're doing things that have a negative effect on your immune system, you're not sleeping a lot and you just got a lot of other things that have a negative effect on your whole health holistically, then I found from my own personal experience, when I've been run down and not feeling the best and doing a lot of those things, then I start to get an issue with my wisdom teeth. So that is something to be aware of. So diet is a huge thing and also just other things with your whole a lifestyle practice. So that is something to be aware of. And then it goes on to say, third molar surgery is a multi-billion dollar industry that generates significant income for the dental profession, particularly oral and maxillofacial surgeons. It is driven by misinformation and myths that have been exposed before, but that continue to be remagulated by the profession. And as you can see, this website in general, if you don't know about it, NCBI is the website to find any type of scientific research and you can find similar articles on PubMed as it says here as well. So it's a really reputable website that you can really, really trust. This is not just based on non-science based information, it's all scientifically backed up, which is really good. And then it goes on to here. Myth number one, third molars have a high instance of pathology. And it goes on to then say, not more than 12% of impacted teeth have associated pathology, which you said earlier. This instance is the same as for appendicitis, which is around 10%. And I talked about why you need your appendix and why you should not get them removed. If you haven't seen that warning video, I'll put a link for it up above and you can check it out. And cholecystitis, 12%. Yet prophylactic, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce these two, I can't, but yeah, whatever this says <laughs> and this one are not the standard of care. And then it says here, why then prophylactic 
third molar extractions. And then it has this little chart titled this, percentage pathology and affected, and it says the percent for each single one. So you can see it's a very, very low percent for each one, which means only in around 20% of cases would you need to get your wisdom teeth removed and they talk about this even more and they also have the other myths early removal of third molars is less traumatic and if you want to read that you can because a lot of people believe that and that is not true they also have the estimated third molar extractions per year by doctor performing extraction in the united states and as you can see here it is around 10 million which earns them a whopping around 3.3 billion dollars a year which is just yeah big 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 business and we talked about that a bit earlier on and it talks all about the number myth pressure of erupting third molars cause crowding of anterior teeth and they go into that in full details if you want to read that and the risk of pathology and impacted third molars increase with age and there is a little risk of harm in the removal of third molars which is completely untrue. It can cause pain, swelling, trismus, hemorrhage, dry socket, periodontal damage, soft tissue infection, injury to this joint, which I cannot pronounce, malaise, temporary parathesia, numbness of the lips, tongue, and cheek, permanent paracesia, fracture of adjunction teeth, fracture of the mandible, fracture of the maxilla, synthesis, extraction or infection and anesthetic complications. And that is just a few of the issues that it can cause. Because what is happening, when you have your wisdom teeth removed, you've then got this big hole there. And as the skin is healing over, it's then trapping bacteria underneath there. So then people are getting a whole host of different health issues and symptoms short term and long term. And Dr. Hal Huggins, if you don't know about him, has talked about this and you can do some research in to what he talks about on this in more detail. So even if you don't think that you're getting affected by the removal of them now, or you won't if you get them removed in the future, the chances of you actually not being affected by them due to the thing that I've just mentioned is pretty much zero because unless you've been doing things that can completely get rid of any bacteria the whole time the wound is open and healing, which is pretty much near on impossible, then it's gonna be causing you some issues. And this is the same thing that root canals can be doing as well, which I really do not recommend root canals whatsoever. They're really, really dangerous. And I've talked about that in another video that I'll link up above, so if you're interested in that, you can click that now. So that's it for this article. And yeah, I recommend that you definitely check it out so you can learn more information on that. And then you have this, which I became aware of many, many years ago. Traditional Chinese medicine talks a lot about how each tooth is connected to different parts of the body internally and externally. So if you look here, this is the right upper molar, which we're gonna talk about first. So this is connected joints wise to the right shoulder, elbow, hand, SI joint, foot, and toes. So yeah, that is not something that you want to be doing is having a negative effect on these joints by having your wisdom teeth removed. And the endocrine gland that it is connected to is the anterior pituitary gland. And if you're someone that doesn't know about this gland, because a lot of people wear the adrenal glands, the thyroid, but a lot of people aren't aware of the pituitary gland. So this is this very small gland here in the brain. And this gland produces a lot of different hormones, such as growth hormone, which is known as the anti-aging hormone. And so many people in today's world get a synthetic form from the pharmaceutical industry and through the doctors, which has loads of negative effects on them. And then there's a hormone that's called prolactin, which a lot of people call the sex breaks hormone, because in most people, when you have higher levels of prolactin, it lowers your sex drive. And it's also something that is increased within the body in females when they're pregnant and breastfeeding. And it can lower your energy levels. And a lot of people have issues with high prolactin. It actually after orgasm in females and men 
start to increase within around two days after orgasm. And then there is the follicle stimulating hormone known as FSH, luteinizing hormone, which is key for having optimal testosterone levels within the body. And then adrenocorticotropic hormone known as ACTH. And what this hormone does within the body is get the adrenals to start producing cortisol, neuroadrenaline, and adrenaline. So it's key for having optimal adrenal function. And then there is the thyroid stimulating hormone known as TSH, which a lot of people have issues with enough of this being produced and it causes a whole host of issues. And so many people have thyroid issues going on in today's world. So you obviously don't want this gland to be affected in a, a negative way. So it's definitely a good idea, just for this reason alone, to keep your wisdom teeth in. And then it goes on to the organs. So it says the right heart gets affected by the wisdom teeth, the right duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, and then the terminal ileum, which is the third part of the small intestine. And then you go on to the right third molar, brackets wisdom teeth, and it goes on to say it affects the right heart, the terminal ileum, which we talked about a minute ago, the ileocecal valve, which is the valve that goes from the small intestine to the large intestine. And then the joints it affects, as it says here, I'll actually zoom in, says right shoulder, elbow, hand, the SI joint, foot, and toes. And it's connected to the element of fire, which they talk about in traditional Chinese medicine. So if you're someone that wants to have optimal digestion as well, which so many people have digestive issues, you do not want to get your wisdom teeth removed whatsoever. So as you can see, there's many reasons as to why to not get them removed. Then we go on to the left upper third molar and it affects the joints on the left side, shoulder, elbow, hand, SI, joint, foot, toes. And again, it affects the anterior pituitary gland, the left heart, the left side of the duodenum, which we talked about earlier on, jejunum, which is the middle part of the small intestines, and the ileum. And then if we go to the last molar, which is the left lower third molar, is it affects the left heart, left side of the jejunum, ileum, and for the joints, the left shoulder, elbow, hand, SI joint, foot, and toes. The element for this side is also fire as well. So you can see the teeth serve a very beneficial role within the body to give you the best health possible because they're connected to different things. So when you're removing it, you are gonna be having a negative effect on them. And also, if you're someone that is having issues with an infected wisdom tooth and it's there, then that's gonna affect you as well. So you really need to have optimal health with your wisdom tooth and take care of them through good dental hygiene and by having a healthy whole food diet, drinking very clean water, keeping away from toxic bathroom products, which I talked about them in another video, which I'll link up above in case you're interested in that. And I'll put a link down below for this dental relation chart in case you're interested in this because it talks about every single different tooth on this chart that are within your mouth and how they are connected to different parts of your body and certain glands and organs. So that is it for this video. If you have any questions for me, please leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And if you like the video, like it down below give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down. I don't mind. And please share this video with anyone else that you think wants to learn the truth on why they should not get their wisdom teeth removed and go through some sort of very intense procedure where, look, it makes your mouth bleed loads and it's very, very traumatic. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis where I'm debunking a lot of different things that dentists talk about, but also hospitals and doctors. And I also have many informational videos coming on many different things to help you go in the direction of optimizing your health and eliminating sickness and disease within your mind and body 
holistically. So if there's time for you, I say good to you. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.